Welcome into the next episode of Cruise Talks. I'm your host, Just Cruz. This episode, we're going to be going into a couple of different things. We're going to be talking about our representatives, our, our veterans, the Senate, uh, the committees, the Veteran Affairs Committees. We'll be going into that. We'll be going into how I've been dealing and doing in graduate school and then also getting the word out, uh, which I think is something that we as veterans are failing to do and helping others and avoiding some of the toxicity that is still ongoing in the veteran community and in a lot of communities altogether, because I think it's the lack of discussion. So let's have a chat. So the first things happening are, hey, I'm in graduate school, uh, trying to get my master's degree in public administration. And when I look into it and I'm in class and I'm having these conversations, I have my shorts that I try to do. Uh, it was supposed to be for graduate school on a daily basis when it came to class, but it got kind of overwhelming to do that. Um, it's difficult to track every single day when you have a lot of conversations, you have a lot of discussions with your classmates, with your professors, and you find out information and you gather information that uh, is new to you and something that you still have to like dissect in order to be able to push it out to people in general. So in the case of bills, when it comes to veterans, uh, I'm a veteran myself. I'm a hundred percent permanent total disabled veteran. Uh, that's information that some people think it's taboo to say or to, I wouldn't say I'm glorifying it, but it's just notifying other veterans that yes, it is possible. And yes, you can get a hundred percent. There's no one way of getting it, but that's part of like the other part of the podcast where it's just like getting the word out. Um, but with the graduate studies, I've just been doing that. I, I'm a K-State student and by no means does how I feel or what I say represent anything with the K-State. Um, I never thought I would have to say something like that. But nowadays you have to make sure you don't associate yourself with somebody or with any organization without their consent or just because you're a part of it. You can't say that that's how they feel. And this is strictly how I feel on the situations. Um and the conversations I had with my classmates and stuff like that. So I won't mention any names or anything of the sort, um, but just conversations that we had in class talking about uh, just policy making, uh, public administration, being a, a public servant, working for the public. You notice that it's the, the military falls into that. You are, you are working for the public. You are a government agent, basically. One way or another, you work for the United States. Easy way of putting it. The multiple things that are different things that happen is just that sometimes the representation isn't there and some of the representa representation isn't done correctly. So in the form of just the military and, and the civilian life or the private sector, public sector, there's a lot of similarities within it. So... Within those similarities, you have the issue of pay. In the public sector, most of the time, the pay is already announced. It's already known. So you know what the people are getting paid. And we had a discussion on how that can be effective, how that's not effective. And with the military, I think it's effective, but it doesn't get taken care of in the right way. Due to the fact that, hey, you're in the military you have soldiers or you are a supervisor to somebody, you already know what they're getting paid. Now, the thing is, is I don't know if that's one of the reasons why the military sometimes fails to do or give financial classes. Yeah, they have financial resources, but they don't go out of their way to do finance classes. You'll have sharp classes. You'll have EO classes. You'll have uh, your cyber awareness to make sure your, your, your um, computer access is still available. But they don't teach you the stuff that when it comes to finances and making sure that these kids or adults know how to handle their finances. So that's something that with graduate school, it was something that I've noticed that it's information that's being put out, but not readily available, I guess you could say, because you have 
the ACS. You have the ability to go talk to a financial advisor, but it's not something that's implemented. And it's not something that's pushed out for people to do. So it's something that I guess the military has to work on when it comes to creating policies that actually help out soldiers. Now we have other issues when it comes to needing policies made or accountability being held, which is something that we talked about a lot in our classes. Um, just holding like senators and representatives accountable. Like, are they doing a job? Are they productive? Are they trying to push out bills and actually do stuff that enhances the state's population? And sometimes it's even dealing with the veteran committees, which the House has one, the Senate has one. And just dealing with them, are they doing and producing bills that are efficient and actually helping the quality of life of veterans? So that's one thing leading to that, because with the graduate studies, you notice there's a lot of information. There's a lot of things going on, and a lot of that stuff is not paid attention to. So policies are not paid attention to till it actually affects somebody. And that's something that I think falls into the veteran um, community where a lot of the veterans don't pay attention to it. Like a lot of them are more, hey, I got to get 100% because it comes with these benefits. And that's something that we got to get into also, like with state benefits and all that stuff. Some states have a good amount of benefits for service members or veterans. And then there's some states that I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, there's barely anything for them. You might get like one or two things. And then there's states like uh, Texas that gives you a, a whole plethora of different advantages of being a veteran and deciding to reside in the state of Texas. But those are things that aren't mentioned and the veteran community doesn't do a good job of doing it. I, I've noticed a lot with the veteran community. It's we gain information and sometimes we just keep it to ourselves. We don't pass it out. We don't we don't get the word out, which is the, the main emphasis on this is like, get the word out, give the knowledge, let people know what, you know, understand that not everybody has the same knowledge. Nobody was taught the same way. And some people learn in different ways. But then the thing is, is all this information is available to all veterans. So how I did my last episode of on the road to hundred percent permanent in total, People didn't realize that a lot of that information is out there. There's guides, there's a code of regulations, which writes out and states out all the information you need, showing you what certain um, claims can be, what uh, joints, what diseases, what uh, preconditions that are there. And it's knowledgeable and ready, readily available knowledge and information that's out there. But the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand and a lot of people don't know how to look or don't want to look or feel like they should be told where to look. And I think that's a big problem that's going on with the veteran community right now, because a lot of this stuff is being pushed. A lot of information is being pushed out, but a lot of information is not being held or obtained by the people that need it. There's a couple of uh, YouTube channels that I see that there's this one guy that all he does is just make sure that any kind of bill or anything that's being out there, that's what he's, that's what he's reporting on basically. And he has like videos, I believe like almost daily of just whatever bills or something like that. But the thing is, is when you notice it, the bills that are coming out, it's far and in between when he actually starts talking about something that helps the quality of life for veterans. A lot of the bills I looked into it. Uh, there's been, I believe so far 53, bills. Uh, I'll make sure to double check. I looked into it because we're in the 118th Congress and there's bills that have been passed. And a lot of those bills are just renaming of facilities. So there are some bills here and there that have been effective, that have um, benefited the quality of life for service members. But a lot of the bills are just renaming a facility in order to place it under a service member's name that did something honorable or be beyond what a regular service member would do. And it's great to have those bills. It's great to recognize them. But the thing is, is this is time that's being wasted on renaming a facility instead of figuring out how to fix the VA or what the 
drawbacks are of the VA system, the VA technology, or mental health issues, or having the lack of facilities, or having a lack of personnel to actually take care of all these veterans. The Senate and the House of Representatives, they have a lot of work to do. They deal with all this other stuff. They have to deal with a possible government shutdown, which to this day, I'm still trying to figure out why these people are at such a point where they would rather fight and scare the public into possibly thinking that there might be a government shutdown. Remember, there's a lot of service members that deal with that. Service members don't get paid the most. They deal with paychecks the same as everybody else. And if inflation is going up and the paychecks ain't going up, then that means a lot of these soldiers living like paycheck to paycheck. And if, like I said, they don't have those financial resources or those financial classes, they don't get to know or learn what is going on in these situations. So that's something that gets like tied in and everything is just like cycled around. So other things like naming a facility, right? But then you have news reports of the VA uh, employees leaving because of being overworked or not having the adequate resources or not being compensated or they feel not being compensated in the right uh, amount for all the work they're doing. Now, keep in mind, the PACT Act did come into effect this past year of 2022 in August. That was for a lot of veterans that have been dealing and deployed into areas where they were burning shit. They were burning all sorts of stuff. And it's, cra it's crazy to think that it took this long for the military to actually think about that. And it was just like, yeah, we had these people exposed to all these toxic fumes, some of them uh, to radiation, depending on where they served. Uh, some people dealt with a bunch of stuff like Agent Orange from the Vietnam era, and they never got seen for those things. This was something that took... 30 odd some years after a war or more for them to start realizing that, hey, some of these veterans are dealing with issues that were caused because of wartime. So now with that PACT Act, what they did was, hey, these are conditions that we know people may be dealing with or have incurred because of serving at these wars or during these locations, which I myself am, am a part of that. Um, and that's something that people don't understand. But the word didn't get pushed out as much. The one thing that they tried to do is they tried to make it like a money incentive. It was like, hey, if you file now before the deadline, you'll get back paid from the beginning of August or from when you filed. But the thing is, is that the fact that they don't add to it is, is that you'll get back paid from when you filed your disability. So the thing is, is if you didn't file that far back, you're not going to get back paid till August of last year if you just recently got out like three years prior to this now deadline. So they made it seem like, hey, you can get back paid, but that wasn't really explained. So it was like a monetary push to try to get more people to sign up. Now, you did have a lot of people sign up for that. The question is, is how beneficial was that? Because a lot of those claims that those people put in if you see the reports, it's saying that they've been declined or denied or they're not service connected or they couldn't find proof. But the actuality is, is that when you have a uh, report of VA employees leaving, which are those people that check those claims, it's that those in-depth reviews are not being done correctly and not being looked into. So that's where like a public administration degree comes into thought because it's like, hey, maybe with time, continue doing stuff, work in the public sector uh, as a public official and try to see if, hey, maybe I can get to a point where I could start thinking about creating policies or having other veterans and actually sitting down with veterans and talking to them about, hey, what can we do to fix things? Because the thing is, is yes, it's great that you can file now for things that you incurred while in service but at the same time if you can't get the service that you need to get because of lack of employees lack of medical professionals uh psychiatrists uh chiropractors or physical therapists like 
if you don't have those resources, it doesn't really matter if people file or not. You're not really improving the quality of life for these veterans. Now, was it a good step? Yes, it was a good step in order to, you know, produce stuff, get people their benefits and at least have them claim it. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people don't understand. A lot of veterans don't understand this is that if you die from one of these service connected disabilities, if you have a family, your family uh, can file to continue to receive pay due to the fact that you passed away because of a service connected benefit. Now, there's certain criteria to me and certain stuff, but it only works and it only happens if the person passes away from a service connected um, disability. Now, I've had a couple of people uh, reach out to me just asking questions about um, filing, how they should file, how they should go about it. And I just gave them the information I used and the resources I did and the knowledge I obtained. Now, there's a bunch of websites. There's uh, Reddit posts, Reddit forums, there's Facebook groups, there's there's different institutions, different companies, and they all provide this information. But at the same time, all this information is free. All this information is out there. So sometimes it confuses me because it's like getting the word out is difficult. But some people don't take advantage of that because it's like you're asking people to pay to gain knowledge that they are able to get. Now, all this knowledge is not easy to find because, yes, if you have somebody that's been dealing with claims they know and they know the ins and outs and stuff which is very beneficial to learn but it's information that's already there just if the veteran actually takes the time to research look into what they have to do or even check out those forums and those pages or those groups you can obtain a whole bunch of information on your own without having to pay for it so that's always something that i've always wondered about because it's like getting the word out is just letting people know what's going on, getting them the information so that they know. And especially for people that are still on active duty. So active duty, this is for you. Make sure you're notating your stuff. Make sure you use the BDD program, uh, the benefits delivery at discharge program when you're getting out the military. Why? Because it saves you a whole bunch of time. It saves you a lot of resources. When you're getting out, you get your claims processed and by the time you're out your process is already claimed and you may get your ratings within a week or two of you actually etsing out the military now if you don't want to do that and you want to spend possibly years months trying to figure stuff out by all means that's on you but i'm trying to get the word out the bdd process is the easiest process to do ask somebody that's gotten out get that word out, get that information out, let them know like, Hey, there's resources available. There's information available for you to be able to file ahead of time. Um, it's not, you have to depend on Congress to do it. This is something that's on the veteran themselves. Now I understand a lot of veterans don't want to file. They feel that it's their right, which of course it is. But at the same time, if you hurting, something's wrong with you, if you ain't at your 100% and you know it was caused by the army, why ain't you filing a claim? That's where I don't understand. Now, if you're perfectly fine and you have no issues, which, like I've said before, I, I don't think that's possible leaving the military. But if that's how you are, that's how you are. Cool. But you got to understand that you can still get the word out to somebody else. Just because you ain't filing doesn't mean you got to hold it in, not give out the information. There might be somebody else that does need to file. If you know something, just spread the word to them. It, there's nothing. It doesn't hurt the veteran community to do that. But at sometimes, that's why I say like you get into those, into those groups, those forums. Some of them they have toxic. They have toxic people within them because there was a bunch of toxic people in the military, and now they're toxic on the outside when people are just asking for information. The amount of times I've seen people ridicule or say something negative to somebody that's literally and genuinely asking a question is outrageous and it's just like yeah the, the forums and the, and the groups they do do something and they do delete those users which they have the right to and they should because it's like it's to get the information out you want to have everybody educated if everybody's educated everybody's better off but if you're not assisting that that's where the problem lies you're not getting the word out. You're not helping create policies that allow for veterans to get better. Because if the veterans don't pay attention, the veterans don't get fixed. 
that's it. Unless you go to your congressman or send a letter to, if they're in the Veteran Affairs Committee, whether they're in the House or in the Senate, you can send them emails, you can send them information. If there's enough of us, they're going to have to start paying attention. And that's, uh, um, John Stewart did that. That's why you saw him advocating and talking to people. And it took a celebrity to try to push something like this in order to happen because he wants to fight for veterans. And that's something that we need more from our senators and representatives. It was just like, there was a couple that did fight for when this whole government shutdown thing was going on, that they were trying to pass a bill to make sure that service members received their pay. Now, how do y'all think that deals with morale when soldiers are at work and they get told they possibly might not get paid? They got bills. They got a car note maybe a house note, got to pay for the phone, got to pay for groceries, but they might not get paid. Yes, there are a ton of banks that actually pay ahead or give an advance because they know the government ain't going to not pay them. But it's just like you have to deal with that. That's, that. That can turn the finance, somebody's finances terribly if they don't have the money and they were expecting it and that bank just happens to be late or not be one of those banks that does that. You might have somebody missing payments. Now that affects the credit score and all that. And what do they get for it? Counselings. Because now they got to go see a financial advisor because they messed up their finances and they didn't plan correctly. Well, nobody plans to not get paid when they're in the military. So that's something, like I said, getting the word out about financial help and financial advisors is something that, you know, you can get your, get the word out. That's the same thing with benefits. Get the word out. Every state has different benefits. Some are for property taxes. Some are that you don't get a retirement, um, your retirement pay taxed. So you're getting disability and you're getting retirement and none of it is taxed. So that's a plus monthly if that's what you're receiving. You have states that offer free hunting license, free fishing licenses. But the thing is, is not all the states are the same. So most states have the federal level, which the federal level doesn't really give you too much now, does it? You have your VA benefits, which that's a federal level. Everything is there. You get your compensation. But then from there, every state varies. Now, as I've been doing research, there's the uh, National Survey Analysis for Veterans. I believe I probably mis mispronounced that. I I'll, I'll put it I'll put it in there. And I'll put a little tag to make sure I show I, I show what the the word is. But that they did they conducted a survey, and that was in twenty ten. Basically, getting the information and asking veterans about different information, just like status stuff like that. And this is something that they didn't reach that many people. In total, right now, there's approximately almost nineteen million veterans in the United States. That's residing anywhere around the world, but there's 19, 000, 19 million veterans in the States or that are classified as veterans. Of those, about 5 million have disability claims. So you're telling me 14 million veterans don't have any issues. A lot of those, it's broken down and that's something that I will be doing also besides the podcast. I'll be doing uh, videos which are going to break down each state's benefits going from Alabama all the way to Guam uh, and the Virgin Islands. Each state's uh, state benefits, what you can get, what you can't get, uh, just basically the resources, the, the pages that they're at, and then also the numbers for the state. So basically making sure to ensure that everybody knows like, hey, the state of Alabama has this many veterans, this many served in World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, uh, OEF, OIF, all the enduring freedoms possible, Iraqi freedom, Afghan, like all, all those, they're, they're all incorporated and it has it there and it has the numbers. Just to give a highlight for everyone to know like, hey, this is the state you're from. This is the information you need. This is the stuff and the benefits you can obtain. Why? Because it's important to get the word out. And that's the, the, the biggest thing is getting the word out, letting people know like you have different benefits that you can take advantage of or are there for you because of the fact that you're a veteran. 
You gain those. You earn those. You're entitled to those. Now, like I said, all states are not created equal. Some have more benefits than others, but that doesn't mean you have to stay in the state you are. If you know you can get better benefits in another state, that's why a lot of people move to Texas because there's a lot of benefits that come from being a veteran and living in Texas. There's other states that have a plethora of also beneficial um, benefits, but the thing is, is the word doesn't get out because nobody understands it. Nobody knows. Some of those benefits are outdated. To put it in, in, in the easiest term, some have been around for too long. Some have been around for too little. And those issues are incorporated into the fact that the word doesn't get out. Veterans are not being told what they need to be told. Information is not being put out as it needs to be. Um, just even with the getting out of the military, the process isn't the same for everybody. Everybody should be going through the same process, but the word doesn't get out as to what you should be doing, who should be contacted, who should be responsible for this or that. That doesn't get notated. Nobody pays attention to it. Nobody gets held accountable when a soldier that's getting out doesn't get allowed or doesn't get given proper time because mission shows up or they had to go to the field or whatever nonsense um, a command team might come up with or that platoon sergeant or that team leader. It's all those issues that come out, but there's nothing accountable. The, the word doesn't get out like, hey, you're entitled to go to your Soldier for Life SFL tap or whatever name they keep on coming up, trying to change it to make it sound like it's actually beneficial for soldiers. But when the soldiers are going through it and going through issues, nothing gets done. Nothing gets reported. Uh, I, I, You never hear about that. You never hear about somebody getting out and they're dealing with the fact that they're not being allowed to resource or have the time to make sure that they're taken care of, which it doesn't happen all over the place. Understand that. But the word doesn't get out that you're entitled to that. It's mandated by Congress that you do that. But the thing is, is who's holding what accountable? Because we have the committees doing hearings on, hey, where's the money going that we gave you all why is the VA failing? Why are claims being held back? Uh, why, um, what was it? The bill that just passed about the firearms, because before it was being sent out to a registry, basically for the Second Amendment. Now, if you had any mental health issues or something like that, you could basically not be able to buy, purchase, uh, own, or hold onto a firearm because of that. Uh, now that got changed. So the bill, that's something we can get into. Like I could go into bills later on because that's that's what I've been doing for school. So school has helped me take a deeper dive into veterans, issues, bills, policies, things that can benefit uh, veterans. But the question and the thing that um, I've asked, and that's something that I want to make a question for, and I want to hand out a survey to all your, all, all, all of you veterans, um, is why are we not using our benefits? Just a, just a questionnaire. Most of it is, that's the, that's the main question I want to get answered. Um, cause that national survey for an analytics for veterans that has mentions of certain things, but I want to know why does it benefit us to have Congress, uh, our Veterans Affairs Committees actually create these bills? And does it make people actually file a claim or file for disability? There's tons of bills that get passed. Like I said, a bunch of them are name changes, but these changes like the PACT Act, when that came out, did that influence people to push out a claim? Or was it just like, hey, I'm already disabled. I already got claims. I need to, I, I need to file this to try to increase it because I'm already have a claim. So that's one thing I'm waiting on the numbers that I'm still waiting for them to put that together to see is where do we get from making more beneficial bills or policies through, through Congress? Where, where does that get us? Does that lead to more benefits that actually are being used or are just the same veterans that already have benefits 
use utilizing the system. So it's like we have so many veterans that are dealing with issues. We still have a ton of veterans that die daily. Um, there's still the 22 a day when it comes to suicide. That takes a lot of that, that takes a lot of veterans away from us. Veterans that could have been getting help, didn't think they needed help or didn't seek help because they didn't know how to get help. There's also the Veterans Crisis Hotline. Dial 988, press 1, and you'll be taken care of. Always remember that, that you can always do that. But it's getting the word out. That's the, that's the biggest thing. We need to get the word out. We need to explain to veterans what their benefits are, where they can find them at, who they need to talk to, where they can where they can go to to actually get all this information, whether it's at the VA or the American Legion or the Veterans of Foreign Wars. There's, there's different resources at different places you can go to to get this, but it shouldn't be that veterans are paying out of pocket to obtain this knowledge. Now, I know a lot of channels ain't going to agree with that. A lot of podcasts may not agree with that, but I don't think you should be charging a veteran to give them information that they deserve, they're entitled to have, and they already have. They just didn't know where to find it. So that's one thing I know people are probably going to disagree with. I have a discord now and that's what I'm doing. I'm building to give information to all veterans so that if veterans want to get information, I'm getting the word out by making the discord. That's going to have all those benefits lined up, all that information placed in there. And that's something that while I'm doing graduate school research, I, it allows me to find more information and more topics to be able to help veterans out. So at the end of the day, I'm just here to try to get the word out. That's all we got for this episode of Cruise Talks. Once again, I'm your host, Just Cruise. Appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.